Give me one goal life. Hello, welcome to our webinar. Uh, it uh, will be the f uh, first uh, in the row of the webinars uh, uh, on the different uh, topics. Uh, a few days ago, we've been sitting uh, with our team and have been thinking uh, about the different scenarios uh, our product being used by our customers. And you can read in the, uh, our blog uh, the article about all the different uh, type of scenarios we have uh, been uh, looking through. And we decided to make the series of webinars which will cover the different topics uh, so uh, that we will show you in practice how you can uh, use uh, our solution uh, to do the actual jobs. And today's webinar is related to uh, the first one, which is a multi-camera production uh, uh, remote type of environment. So uh, today we made this kind of uh, demo setup uh, when we have uh, four cameras at the remote site uh, uh, brought to our studio and we are doing the vision mixing uh, in the studio. Uh, it was a little bit uh, uh, inconvenient for us to do it uh, in the actual uh, live environment uh, for the reasons that uh, we are a software company, we are not doing the production ourselves. Uh, but anyway, we uh, decided to use the recording, which was done two years ago uh, in one of the productions for the volleyball. Uh, and uh, uh, we got uh, four cam camera angles. Actually, we were able to do more, but uh, for uh, this specific recording we had only four angles, so uh, we do have a server which is uh, doing simultaneous playback of uh, four camera angles and then we use those uh, uh, inputs uh, to our solution. So let me describe you how it's uh, set up uh, and uh, for that uh, I will switch to very remote desktop uh, for the remote location uh, using TeamViewer session. And you can see four inputs, uh, remote camera one, two, and three, uh, the different camera angles for the same game, uh, uh, all in full HD, uh, uh, 50 uh, interlaced uh, frames. And so this is our setup on the remote locations. And they are bringing all of those four streams simultaneously to our studio location where I am sitting right now. So let me switch back uh, from a TV recession to uh, my local desktop. Uh, here you can see our uh, web uh, uh, representation of, of those two locations, the remote one, uh, which have four sources and having the studio feed returned back to it. 
and this is our studio uh, we are receiving all of those uh, uh, four plus uh, additional PTZ camera, which is uh, the local here, uh, which we, we will talk a little bit more uh, later on. So uh, on our receiver side, we have all of those four camera angles being received. And uh, basically, we do have a fixed latency set for all of those four camera angles. And uh, this is the way we have a synchronized uh, four camera angles uh, uh, being brought to our studio at the same time. Uh, and another one, which is PTZ camera, I will talk a little bit later, as I already mentioned. Uh, so let me show you the magic, how it works. So uh, basically, we received all of those, re outputted as NDI sources, and now they are brought to our vision mixer. So I can show you the multi-viewer with uh, all four camera angles. I can switch uh, between uh, different angles uh, on the program output and on the preview, as well as I have my own local cameras here. Uh, so uh, this is pretty straightforward. Uh, right now you've seen it was uh, in the middle of uh, the timeout uh, of the game. And it's just finished and, uh, and they continue to play. So uh, you brought all the cameras. You can put on uh, the additional graphics uh, like the score or uh, any other graphics replays, uh, which you can also do locally uh, during the game. and. Uh, this is the way it can be done. Uh, as I mentioned already, this is a pre-recorded pre session, so we un do not really have this game going live right now. Uh, but uh, just to give you an introduction how you can basically do it with the live cameras, with the HDI or NDI sources, it will be exactly identical setup. So you just have one machine with uh, decklink cards or AJ or any other or NDI sources. Uh, bring all of those signals together to your studio and have all of them simultaneously with the same amount of delay and then you can switch uh, back and forth. And the final part is uh, to send the return feed back to the venue so uh, uh, the people on site can see what um, kind of graphics you put on uh, when you are on replay or if you have uh, the commentary sitting uh, at the pitch they can see the replays or whatever. Uh, so let me switch back uh, to the remote location uh, in the team viewer, and I have one receiver running here, which is receiving only the studio feed, and uh, you can see the amount of delay on the left side. This is the camera one right now uh, coming from the venue, and on the right side, it's the program feed uh, going. Uh, back from our studios and this is the actual image uh, on the right which is shown uh, at the venue and you can see the amount of delay be uh, by the game so it's uh, roughly somewhere around uh, 700 milliseconds back and forth from the venue to us and then sent back uh, and the next part uh, I wanted to show you today is that uh, we have a lot of questions regarding the uh, integration of NDI workflow uh, using our solution uh, for uh, bringing the video feed is not the uh, most important part. Uh, another important part is also having the control of all the PTZ cameras uh, remotely. Uh, and this is exactly what I want to show you right now. So I have uh, one PTZ camera uh, sitting right here at my desk right now. And I have my own local publisher right now, which is uh, sending this uh, PTZ camera. Uh, and uh, for this uh, demo here, I will receive it back uh, in the local VT receiver. And what I can do now is uh, that instead of controlling the uh, camera itself, I can use this output from uh, VT receiver uh, to have the same amount of controls you usually have this. Uh, remote camera so I have the same studio monitor and I uh, which is receiving uh, the lo this local output from VT receiver and I can uh, do whatever changes you want uh, zoom in zoom out uh, 
make some uh, panoramas whatsoever. Right now I'm just showing you the recording of preset, but uh, basically uh, all the controls are working. Uh, let me try to move it around a little bit to some weird location probably on top. Oh, this is my background. So uh, yeah, let's switch back to the original location. So uh, it's pretty straightforward. You don't have to do anything. Uh, it just works out of the box. Uh, you are sending the data through video transport from uh, location IA to location B, then have this NDI source uh, available at your local uh, vision mixer. Uh, and you have all of those PTZ controls available for you as well. Uh, this also works for the tele lights if you have your NDI tele lights. Uh, and basically, it doesn't really matter if uh, you have uh, locally connected NDI uh, devices or they are miles away from your studio and you can have all the same controls uh, at your hands. And what uh, is actually uh, th the main gain of all of this is that uh, you can have a uh, uh, reasonable amount of uh, reduced costs uh, in terms of uh, uh, how many people you need to send on site. It uh, uh, was also quite important uh, during this pandemic time uh, when uh, we have a lot of strict rules uh, not to have uh, a lot of people at the venues, don't have any fans on the uh, and the crowd uh, uh, at the stands. Uh, so the amount of people uh, who can actually work at the remote location is now quite limited. Uh, so all of those remote production workflows uh, uh, really useful and uh, we have a plenty of clients who have been using our product to uh, bring uh, the remote feeds uh, into the studio, do all the mixing and even have uh, a few uh, different locations working in uh, sync to do one uh, large production uh, at the same time as well as you can have the commentary sitting at home, they can receive the feed from you, uh, they do the commentaries and send the audio feedback to you. And uh, all, this, all of those possibilities uh, were something uh, unimaginable just a few years ago and now you can do it uh, on budget using the uh, standard uh, internet connection and uh, you can uh, dramatically reduce the costs of uh, uh, having less people on the ground, uh, have uh, more control about all the equipment uh, in your studio and do not uh, have to bring all the replay machines or uh, some additional stuff uh, to the location. Basically, you just need to send the cameras, uh, some servers with the video transport installed, and that's it. Uh, so uh, it dramatically reduce the cost for our clients uh, to do the same jo job, uh, but uh, uh, probably halving the price tag for uh, this uh, kind of production. Uh, basically, that's it what I wanted to show you today. And it's going to be another uh, uh, webinars coming uh, with uh, the different topics uh, uh, mentioned in our uh, blog posts. Uh, uh, regarding the remote anchors and uh, uh, delivery of the video feeds or some other tasks and uh, we will go through the details how uh, we can use the video transport in the different applications later on. Uh, we are constantly working on the new uh, updates. Uh, we haven't been releasing the video transport release version for quite a while uh, since we've been uh, better testing uh, all of those uh, VT 2.0 protocol uh, uh, for the last few months and uh, we expect to have uh, the official release of our uh, new version uh, quite soon, uh, which will have uh, VT 2.0 protocol enabled by default. Uh, for during our test, we uh, noticed that it's uh, much more stable now and uh, you know, looks like it's uh, ready for the production release now. Uh, let me switch to the questions. Uh, uh, which we have on YouTube. So let me read through them. What is the input of uh, four volleyball streams into remote machine? Uh, it was uh, 
pre-recorded uh, as I mentioned before uh, so we are just outputting uh, four NDI feeds there but it doesn't really matter it uh, could be a SDI it was just easier for me to set it up in the way that I uh, have uh, basically the NDI feeds uh, playing on the same machine where then they, they are captured uh, back into our software uh, uh, and I have tested this setup for up to 10 streams simultaneously from one machine, uh, but I have pretty decent machine there uh, with the l latest uh, uh, Ryzen 9 uh, CPU and uh, quite uh, expensive right now uh, RTX uh, uh, 3090 um, uh, GPU, uh, which is probably hard to find right now. Uh, and yes, I did have to make some tweaks to uh, disable the limit of free simultaneous streams uh, on the uh, gaming GeForce card, uh, which is not official uh, way of doing it, but uh, it was much easier for me to do it that way. Uh, PTZ control do work with SRT enabled cameras. Uh, uh, it works for the NDI cameras right now. Uh, we had the request from one of the vendors uh, to actually include the option to have the uh, transfer of uh, Visca over IP protocol uh, through our uh, product. So if you have uh, uh, any uh, PTZ camera which have a straight HDI output uh, and have the Visca IP protocol built in, uh, uh, in one of the next releases we are going to have this feature so you can uh, select the source and assign uh, the IP addresses for the Visca IP protocol and we will have this kind of tunnel for the Visca IP so you will be able to use uh, any of your existing uh, control panels for the uh, Visca control protocol as well as software solutions to uh, bring the PTZ controls for those uh, HDI cameras uh, as well uh, and uh, this is to answer the SRT question so uh, for example, PTZ Optics are going to have uh, uh, some release of uh, SRT feature uh, in their product. So uh, we uh, this, uh, this ability to control uh, the uh, Visca protocol for those uh, SRT enabled products uh, is uh, one of the options uh, for you in the future. Uh, is there a minimum upload speed for the remote location? Uh, I would need to use 4G, 5G mobile hotspot to send camera feed from the remote location. Uh, it depends on the available bandwidth all the time, so it's always a trade-off between uh, the uh, available bandwidth and the quality of the video feed. Uh, what I have uh, shown you right now, I've been using the constant 10 megabits per second per each stream, uh, so for four streams it was 40 uh, in total. Uh, you can go uh, down to 3 or 4 megabits, but I don't really think that uh, it's a perfect solution in terms of the video quality. And uh, we can uh, achieve those uh, bit rates on 4G or 5G networks as well. Uh, but uh, I would strictly recommend to uh, do the proper tests uh, at the actual location, how it's going to work. Uh, the main disadvantage of all of those uh, type of mobile type uh, internet connection is that if you have uh, the sporting event you have a uh, plenty of people on site and all of them have the mob mobile phones so uh, it's uh, something which you can predict that probably uh, it was everything per it, it will be everything perfect during your tests but uh, once the game starts and everybody start to use the uh, some streaming uh, platforms to make the selfies uh, and send it straight away. Uh, you probably will have a bottleneck on the uh, mobile network at that time. So uh, I would suggest to use uh, the proper wired connection uh, all the time if you can uh, actually do it on site. It's not always possible, but I would recommend at least to have some kind of separate connection and uh, not rely on the same network uh, with a, a crowd of people. What about the buffer combo on the receiver side? Uh, yeah, uh, on the buffer setting, as I, m I mentioned, I've set a 300 milliseconds delay uh, and it was enough uh, for my case. 
probably you might need to uh, have some more uh, in case if uh, you have uh, more delay uh, for transmission from uh, your venue to your studio. Uh, so this is something you can play with. Uh, the main idea he is here is that you have to use those uh, fixed uh, latency settings so we can synchronize all the streams to the same amount of latency. Uh, do you have control of PTZ cameras from your studio? Uh, I don't have any uh, at remote location right now. I have only one sitting here, but basically it will work exactly the same as I shown. So if I would have the same camera sitting at the remote location, uh, I can send it through our software and control it the same way I have just shown you. Uh, what do you need uh, the better processing power at publisher or at the receiver? Uh, definitely at the publisher, since you are doing the all the encoding of the video feeds uh, at the sender side. So uh, you need more GPU power for the encoding, uh, comparing to the decoding on the receiver side. Uh, it depends on the actual codec used, uh, but uh, the rule of thumb is that uh, the encoding is quite uh, intensive process. Uh, so this is something you have to keep in mind. Um, okay, it was coming from someone. Uh, yes, we have Visco over IP protocol. Uh, yeah, that's why we decided to uh, integrate uh, the support of this protocol in uh, our future releases. And uh, I hope it will release uh, really, really soon uh, since uh, we are trying to uh, deal with this. Uh, some of the vendors who have been asking uh, for this edition. Uh, with board docs, you have IFB Intercom. Uh, is this something you look into? Uh, since we are not uh, making devices ourselves, uh, so uh, uh, we do not really make the intercoms uh, ourselves. But in general, we can transport any metadata uh, in addition to the video feed. So uh, I never tested BirdDog intercom system with video transport myself, but I believe it should work. Uh, probably you can uh, write back an email to me if it doesn't, and I can take a look. Uh, as of uh, our own intercom uh, solution for that, uh, we are currently working to redesign all the workflow uh, from the studio side. So uh, we would like to have uh, some intercom features integrated uh, firstly for the web guest feature uh, which i'm not covering uh, on this webinar right now but uh, the idea is that uh, we are thinking about making uh, the easy solution uh, to have uh, everything under your control including the uh, intercom buttons uh, alongside each of the video sources so you can talk directly to uh, the specific uh, guest uh, on the other end and uh, for those uh, uh, camera operators, uh, uh, we are thinking about having some audio metrics uh, to have uh, our internal intercom feature built in, uh, but this is still work in progress and uh, as I mentioned, uh, all of those intercom features will come first for uh, web guest contribution uh, to allow producers to talk directly to the guests and later on uh, we will take a look how we can actually output the uh, intercom audio and integrate it uh, into remote uh, production uh, hardware so to basically send the uh, audio feed back from back from the production st uh, studio to each camera at the remote location uh, so right now what uh, i can suggest you to do uh, is that I already shown you how to send return video feed back to the venue and uh, the way uh, I personally s set it up. So uh, I have uh, additional channels of audio uh, designated for the intercom feature. So uh, I'm sending the uh, intercom audio, for example, on channel three and four or whatsoever. And then on remote location, I just use the audio day embedder to get this audio out and send it uh, down the chain so the uh, video cameras on site. And same for the intercom back, uh, I can just uh, uh, embed it as an additional audio coming from the venue, for example, have some technical stream coming from the venue with all the uh, intercom inside and then they embed it at the studio and send it into intercom metrics. Um, 
is the way to send the master audio through the return feed. Uh, we do music and need to send return feed as uh, as of composite of everyone with a mix minus. Uh, yeah, so you can send whatever audio you want with your return feed. Uh, it's up to you. Uh, you can embed up to 16 audio channels in your SDI feed or uh, whatever number of channels in your NDI feed. Uh, so you just have to make it uh, set up properly. And uh, the only thing you have to f uh, make some kind of uh, consideration here is that uh, you should understand that uh, in type of remote production environment, you uh, have the delay uh, for this going back and forth. And if, for example, for music production, uh, you will have uh, like 60 milliseconds delay for someone uh, having in-ear monitors, uh, he will become crazy. He will not be able to play along. So uh, what I could suggest for the music scenarios uh, to actually have the audio mixing on site, probably with some uh, remote control of the audio board uh, at the location uh, or you probably might have, uh, depending on the hardware, you might have the actual brain of the audio mixer on site uh, and then just bring the remote control of those brains back to your studio. So you are doing the actual audio mixing at the venue and then sending the audio, mixed audio, uh, back to your studio so you can listen uh, and control it. Uh, of course, it's not so convenient for the audio uh, engineer to uh, actually tweak uh, the audio and s hear the audio with some amount of delay, but it's much less convenient for the actual musicians to hear their sound with uh, that amount of delay. So uh, it just my side note regarding this kind of uh, setups when you do the audio mixing uh, at the studio and then sending it back. It doesn't matter if it's uh, the sports and you just need to send the audio feedback for, for example, for the commentaries or whatever. Uh, they just see the picture with the, some, with the audio and that's fine. But uh, for the music type of setup, uh, I believe uh, you still have to do the audio mixing on site if you want to do the monitoring on site. Or probably you can do uh, the split system, uh, like uh, doing all the monitoring mix at the venue and doing the final mix uh, at your studio. So a kind of uh, split uh, setup uh, for that specific case. Um, so let me go on. What of your product is building Quick Link Studio in a box and a ST tensor? Uh, <laughs> uh, actually, it's hard for me to answer. I'm not quite sure what exactly is currently used uh, in those boxes. Uh, I believe it's better to ask this question directly to the vendors of uh, those solutions. Uh, I personally don't know. Is your NDI on remote location converted to SRT and reconverted back to NDI or used as SRT back in the studio? Uh, yes, it's converted. So uh, in my setup right now, I have uh, the NDI source uh, uh, being transcoded uh, to H.265 uh, codec, uh, transferred through SRT and then converted back uh, to the NDI here so I can do the actual mixing or I can output to the SDI uh, to have the hardware mixer. I have a software mixer right now. Uh, but yeah, in general, we are making this conversion back and forth uh, since NDI uh, is too large to actually send it through the wire uh, via internet. That's why we need this uh, conversion to the less bit rate. Uh, you have a standard NDI feed for the camera one, uh, channel one and two. How would you add another channel for intercom channel three in the software? Uh, one of the ways of doing it, uh, and let me show you uh, right now, for example, uh, on my studio feed here, uh, I can show that uh, I currently have only two channels of audio at uh, my studio feed and I can go into the settings and there is an option to uh, add external audio. Uh, you can just click uh, at the drop down menu and select the another audio device you are going to use for this uh, intercom input, for example. Uh, for example, I can select, uh, let me click what, 
whatever. Uh, and then I click OK. And you can see here that now I have uh, four channel uh, audio in the feed. So I have two original audio channels and another two channels which I have just selected as uh, external audio. And another way of doing it is that you can have uh, the hardware uh, uh, audio embedder and have uh, everything uh, brought to us uh, via uh, uh, SDI uh, with up to 16 audio channels uh, and it will be up to you what uh, audio you would like to assign. And as I showed you right now, I, uh, the way I have added it in uh, local configuration, I can do it to remote site as well and select, for example, camera one, go into the settings and also select the external audio, select the different audio source there, uh, click OK. And now uh, you can see that I have two channels of audio for camera two, three and four and have four channels of audio for camera one. So uh, this way you can make this uh, back and forth uh, uh, additional audio communication uh, for your intercom stuff. Yeah, you're welcome, Jens. Uh, any more questions? Okay, looks like that's it for today's questions. Uh, I'm a little bit surprised that uh, you don't have uh, so many. Uh, probably because I have already answered a lot uh, during uh, the previous webinars. Uh, and uh, yeah, thanks to you, Dan, as well. Uh, thanks for joining us. Uh, so yeah, it's going to be another webinars coming, so uh, stay tuned and we will cover some uh, other scenarios, how you can use the web guests, how you can just uh, uh, have the production on site and then just send the feed uh, back to your studio with uh, maximum reliability since uh, it's always a trade-off of uh, uh, the less latency or uh, higher reliability. So. Uh, this is something we are going to cover uh, in the upcoming webinars as well. Uh, another question, with VT and direct take, is there a way to record remotely and not on site? Uh, <laughs> yeah, okay, uh, I'll wait for another question. Uh, so, uh, if I understand your question right, uh, you are asking if uh, there is a way to send the feed first from remote location to the studio and then record us using our direct take. Yes, it's totally possible. All the streams available uh, uh, at uh, your studio locations uh, can be recorded using direct take. And we have just uh, released the better version of uh, the latest edition of direct take, which have completely redesigned uh, and uh, this is uh, something you can try, uh, just download and test. Uh, and we are going to have uh, a tighter integration of VT and direct take uh, with the upcoming uh, uh, redesigned uh, user interface of uh, VT 2.0. Uh, and uh, this is something we are working on right now. And uh, if you will take a look at the uh, current design of a uh, uh, latest direct take. Uh, this is kind of representations of uh, the style we are going to have in VT uh, as well. Uh, about the Mac version of VT, uh, it's still under development. Uh, there are a lot of efforts uh, actually uh, to make it cross-platform, not only uh, Mac, but also Linux versions for more broadcast grade server integration. Uh, so, uh, yeah, there are a lot of work uh, making it uh, happen. Uh, the main reason for that uh, is uh, that uh, a lot of our software is uh, tightly uh, uh, built on top of the video SDK uh, developed by our company. And video SDK is uh, Windows only. And right now we have to redesign a lot of things from scratch uh, to do uh, Mac OS and uh, Linux versions. So basically, we just have to switch uh, away from uh, our own SDK and start developing uh, a lot of things from scratch. Uh, so, but this is something which is already being done, uh, and we hope to have uh, some stable version at some point. Uh, is there a limit of users that 
could use uh, the link or to ask Val away at what end does the additional connection terminate at turn? Uh, yeah, I got a question, Jens. Uh, right now, uh, uh, all the connection and at your actual VT publisher. So if you having the, uh, a bunch of web previews, all of them will go uh, directly from uh, your uh, PC anyway. Uh, we are going to introduce uh, the additional feature of having VT gateway uh, as a uh, uh, multi-destination uh, hub uh, for web previews and SRT connections. Uh, we are currently testing it internally uh, and uh, VT Gateway is already uh, the crucial part of uh, VT uh, 2.0 connection protocol and right now we are working on uh, integration of uh, WebRTC parts of uh, web guest features and uh, web preview features also uh, as a part of VT gateway functionality uh, to make this kind of uh, uh, spreading the load uh, between different gateways uh, to have uh, the larger amount of uh, previews. Uh, when using web guest link, how do you route the return feed to the guest? Uh, the way it works for the web guests is that uh, uh, during the preparation of your show, uh, you are making uh, the specific SDI or NDI feed as your studio feed. And then, uh, like I have my studio feed coming uh, uh, from my vision mixer right now. And then uh, this is basically will be the feed uh, you are going to send back to your web guest. All you have to do is just a copy web guest URL from here and send it to the guest. Uh, one of the additional feature here is that uh, if you want to use our mix minus feature, you have to go uh, into the settings and enable uh, web guest mix minus. Uh, this will create the uh, mix minus uh, in, uh, for the individual guests. So it will take the studio audio, which was already uh, present in studio PGM, and uh, add all the additional guests uh, into the mix so uh, he can hear the studio audio and the rest of the audio feeds. Uh, one thing which uh, is uh, sometimes uh, not completely understood by our clients is that uh, they are bringing the guests uh, somehow uh, using the different links and then they are struggling to uh, deal with uh, how they can link all of those guests together. So the concept here is that you have one designated studio program feed and then you have uh, the same web guest URL basically for all the guests uh, and they will create this mix, mix minus group so they all see the same video picture and they can hear the program audio uh, plus uh, the additional guests in the group. Uh, if you want to have a little bit more control you can uh, have uh, a few separate uh, studio programs uh, for example, individually per each uh, web guest. But in this case, uh, you will have to deal with a uh, uh, mix minus creation yourself since we, uh, while you're creating the different web guest URL from the different uh, studio program feeds, we no, long uh, no longer know uh, that you actually want them to be the part of the same group. We are going to redesign it a little bit in the future. So uh, you will have an option to have the individual uh, images being shown to the individual guests and have a little bit more control uh, of the uh, mix minus creation and the ability to move the guests from uh, one group to another, for example, have a green room and then send it uh, to the uh, actual live uh, stream. Uh, but this is still a work in progress. Uh, there are a lot of things actually happening uh, at the different parts of our soft solution. So uh, uh, I to have a lot of things uh, in mind how we're going to change the product uh, and we are making our uh, small steps uh, toward the goals uh, uh, as uh, I see them from a production point of view since uh, I'm not just a, a production manager for uh, video transport here. I also have a, a strong background of the actual doing the uh, live productions of uh, large sport events so I do know uh, what you expect for to have in the product uh, and uh, this is only the matter of time that it, uh, always takes some time to develop uh, uh, the specific features I uh, would like to have in the software. So uh, yeah, a lot of uh, things coming here. Uh, 
how do you mute Meek uh, in publisher or the director's Meek is always on and going to everyone's return feed? Uh, it's up to your intercom setup. So uh, usually you have some kind of uh, intercom metrics with uh, your own uh, push to talk buttons or usually for the director feeds it's always uh, on. So you just have uh, it uh, sitting around on the additional channels of the feed and uh, they are heard by all the uh, people who are receiving this signal. Uh, or if you want to break it, just do it in your uh, audio uh, intercom metrics. So yeah, it's up to you to control it. Uh, we are just transferring the audio. It's up to you to do whatever you want to do with it. Okay, anything else from someone? Uh, you are welcome, Eric. Okay, let me give you another uh, 30 seconds to uh, write down some more questions if you have them. Uh, uh, in the meantime, uh, I will once again thank you for joining us today and uh, stay tuned to our additional webinars uh, coming uh, in the next few weeks uh, uh, where we are going to cover all the different aspects of the different scenarios of uh, video transport usage by our clients. And uh, uh, I hope that at some point in time uh, the borders will be open and we will meet uh, in person uh, somewhere uh, at any kind of conference uh, which have been cancelled uh, last year and I'll be glad to meet everyone in person as soon as it will be possible. Okay, looks like there is no more question. Uh, so uh, thanks a lot for joining me today and see you next time and uh, uh, have a safe time uh, wherever you are and uh, uh, good luck in your productions and espe especially with those uh, remote production workflows. Uh, it's a new thing uh, and uh, this is uh, a little bit challenging f uh, at the beginning, but uh, I'm pretty sure that it's something which is uh, uh, here to stay for a long time and uh, this is the way probably the half of the production going to be done uh, in the near future. So, okay, uh, thanks a lot and see you next time. Bye-bye. Uh,